What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchpessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out some of the new features contained in the newest version of D5 Render, version 2.5. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just a quick note, I'm going to be bringing back rendering feature overviews to this channel. If you want more in-depth tutorials on some of these features, I'm gonna be adding them on my Rendering Essentials channel, which I'll link to in the notes down below. All right, so for those of you that aren't familiar, D5 Render is a rendering program. I've talked about it. Um, I've talked about it on my other channel a bunch, but it's a real-time rendering program that allows you to create renderings from your 3D models really quickly. One of the cool things about D5 Render is you can download a free version in order to try it out. Now there's a pro version with some other features, other things like that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And so one of the cool things about D5 Render is it definitely creates really great results and it gives you the ability to control a lot of different things um, from inside of your rendering software. So what it does is it gives you a lot of flexibility. And again, the level of results that it creates is just um, kind of mind blowing a lot of the time. Um, the other thing that I like about D5 Render is just the velocity at which they're adding new features and new changes and they're rolling out new versions with new features it feels like constantly like they're really adding a lot of cool stuff to d5 render and so in this video I wanted to talk about some of the stuff contained inside of the new version version 2.5 and so one of the other things I like about d5 render and I'll link to this in the notes down below is they roll out these very detailed forum posts talking through exactly what they've added so if you really want to kind of like dive deep into this, you can definitely check out this forum post. But the first thing they've added is real-time caustics. Basically the way that caustics work is they simulate the way that light refracts off of different surfaces. And specifically, we're talking about transparent materials. Um, so like glasses and waters and other things like that. All right. And so in order to enable the caustics, um, you're going to need to do two things. So first off, with your material, right? So if I tap my I key and I sample this material, you want to make sure that the material that you have in here, whether it's transparent or water, has the option for caustics enabled, right? If you toggle caustics off, then this isn't going to work. And this is a material by material thing. Um, so you want to make sure that that's enabled. You also want to make sure that the light that you have in here has caustics enabled as well. So notice if I move this light around, right? It's kind of like changing the way the light is being refracted. But to do that, you just go into your light settings over here and you just toggle the option for caustics. And so again, this is a light by light thing. There's no reason to turn it on for lights that aren't supposed to be going through something like this. Um, so just be aware, you don't want to toggle that on on everything because it's just going to hurt your performance. But you can come in here and adjust the intensity of that effect using the caustics intensity. You can also toggle the softness. Um, if you don't want those lines in there to be quite so uh, pronounced, you can see if I toggle that softness to the right, you get a much softer image. All right, so next up, we've got a beta feature designed to speed up image rendering. It's the D5 SR image rendering. It's something you turn on in your preferences. So if you were to go up to your preferences, right here under the widget, um, you're looking for the option for the D5 SR image rendering beta. And so what that's gonna do, and this is a pro feature, by the way, note that some of these are included at the free version, some of them are um, more pro features, so just be aware of that. But when you toggle that on, that's going to improve the rendering speed of images. Now, one thing to note about that is currently you might lose some detail um, with this feature. So just be aware of that. And then also if you're using depth of field or other post-processing effects, they're currently not recommending that you use this, which is probably also why this is in beta. And so one thing to note about this is this is currently automatically being enabled if your resolution is greater than 1440 by 1440. So if you don't want this to work, um, you can just toggle this back off. But just note that if you do have these larger images in here, it's going to um, basically enable this off automatically if you have this turned on. All right, so next up, we've got the ability to show our light shape. And what that means is that means if you add a light in here right now, by default, notice how this is casting light in the scene, right? I can adjust the intensity right here in order to adjust that. I can adjust the light color in the scene if I wanna do that. But currently, if we render it like this, it's not actually going to show up in the scene. However, if we select this light, toggle the option for show light shape, notice what that's going to do is that's actually going to show the light 
in here. So you can use this to actually generate lights that display in your rendering if you decide that you want to do that. Um, so if you do want to show that light for whatever reason, you can do that by toggling show light shape in the light settings. All right, so next up is one that's a little bit difficult to see, but they've optimized the global illumination for the vegetation and plants. So what that's supposed to do is that's supposed to provide you better detail with your plants. I don't know if I can really tell a difference in here because it's hard to see what this would have looked like otherwise, but I can tell you that the plants do look really good in this scene. Okay, and so I'm just going to blow through these next two really quick. So they've optimized the SSS materials, which is going to basically um, give you better denoising for those materials. So if you're using those, you've got that here. Um, they've also improved the edge of grass material, which always always good because having that edge of grass or having that grass come up to an edge and then kind of leave gaps and other things like that can be very frustrating. They've also improved the clarity of the higher resolution images. But where I really wanted to get to is I want to get down into these new features right here. So specifically what I want to look at right now is I want to look at the D5 Studio and the way that you can access that. So they've added this little button over here next to your assets. And what that does is that gives you the ability to pop open the D5 Studio. Well, what that's going to do is that's gonna allow you to access the studio where you can either create your own presets, right? So if I was to click on this right here, right, it's basically going to use the environments and effects to create a preset and you can save it in your space. So that's super exciting because you can preset different things in here, save them, but where this is really exciting is if you jump over into the curated section right here, notice how there's a number of curated effects already in here, right? So if I scroll down and let's go into, let's try this interior theater. If I click on this to download it, it's gonna bring that down, but then I can apply that to my current scene by double clicking on it. So notice what that did is that took the lighting settings and it applied them to this scene right here, which to me is really exciting because you get access, and most of these are exterior, but you get access to um, a lot of these additional lighting setups where you can just bring this in, right? So I double click, double click again, and it's going to apply it to your scene. So you can use these different lighting presets your environment in order to change the way that your scene is lit really quickly. And so obviously there's not going to be a ton that you can see right now because this is just a, this is just a 2D background. But if I was to double click on this, notice how that's going to apply that exterior fog cloudy. And if you look at your environment settings, you can see how each one of these have their own different environment settings. So if I click on this, right, or double click on this, notice how my environment is going to change. It's gonna have a different skylight um, that you can then rotate and adjust, but this allows you to really quickly make these changes and use these preset environments. So super excited about this feature. Okay, so one thing to note about this is if I'm reading this properly, this is a pro feature. I don't think it's available in the free version, I don't think. So that is something just to kind of be aware of is you may not have access to these curated presets unless you have the pro version of D5 Render. Okay, so next up is the section tools. So you can access those tools by going into your preferences, right here and turning on section tools. That's going to give you the option right here to add a section cut to your building. So once you do that, you can click in here and you can add a section plane or a section cube. And I'm going to go ahead and add this in. And so we'll just pick this location right here. So what that's doing, right, is that's adding a section option. Notice how you can move this in and out like this to place it where you want. But once you've placed that section in here and you can also rotate it. So if you wanna rotate it like this in order to give you a different, uh, different angle, you can definitely do that. But that's going to allow you to take a section cut across your building like this, and you're gonna be able to render that out. So um, if you're creating these architectural style renders and you wanna create a cut through or something like that, that is a fast, easy way to add the sections from directly inside of D5. And note that you should be able to place up to three section tools in a scene. So if you wanna take multiple sections, you can do that. You're limited to three, but honestly, three is, a, three is a fair amount of sections anyway. I can't think of a situation where I would need more than that. So, um, definitely excited about these section tools in the new version. 
All right, so another new widget that they've added, and by the way, this is this is where those widgets that they added are super helpful. Um, but basically, what this is going to do is it's going to let you place a camera in your scene, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go find a location. So let's say I was to zoom back down. Let's actually pick one of these preset views like this. Um, but we're just going to click on the option to add a current camera right here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to add a camera based on that location. So now what I can do is I can fly around and I can make adjustments and look at different things in here while still seeing what that camera is going to be. Well, notice if I come in here and I make an adjustment, right? So let's say I was to toggle the light all the way off. Notice how that original camera that's in here is going to see that. And you can also move that around. Right, so this is very similar to a camera in like Unreal Engine or Blender or something like that. You can also adjust the properties of that camera. So if you wanted like auto exposure, things like that, you can adjust that and that camera is gonna see things differently than you're actually seeing in your scene. So this gives you the ability to come around here and work in your scene while still um, seeing what that camera view is going to look like. So super cool, let's say that I was to bring in like a, so let's say that I wanted to drop a tree into this scene. So we're just gonna download this tree. We're gonna bring it into our scene. We'll notice how that tree is actually showing up in that camera right here. So that camera looks like it went away. We're gonna reselect it right here, but we can actually move around this and adjust the tree location Whoops. And I wanna pin this camera so that I can see it, but notice how I can come in here and I can adjust this tree location and see it in the camera down in the lower right hand corner. All right, so they've also adjusted their video editor so that you can work with the shots feature. So what that means is that means like, say you had your original camera view right here, or your original shot, and say that you wanted to add a new one. Well, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna move over here, and actually, let's go ahead and pick one of these pre preset camera views. But what you can do is you can add a new shot based on either your camera or your current view, like this. And so let's say that we wanted to move forward while still looking up at this tree, right? Now we've got two different shots that are in here that we can then adjust so making your animations in here is really easy. So now if I click on this, I've got my one shot where the camera moves this way. And then I've got another shot where your camera moves this way. And these are easily adjustable, right? So if I come in here and I say, for example, that I want this to be six seconds long, that's going to change the length of this shot, right? So you can move this in like this, that shot's going to change, very easy to do. You can also, click and drag. So let's say, for example, now I was to click and drag the forward in here. Notice how that's now going to reverse this. And so I find this very easy to use. This is the first time I've used this and coming in here and making these changes, um, I had no difficulty whatsoever. And uh, it's a lot smoother than a lot of the video editors I've seen in a lot of other rendering programs. And so one other cool thing about this is this does support keyframing of characters. Um, this is an animated character that I downloaded out of the Pro Library. But if I was to add a keyframe here, and then at the end of the scene, maybe a keyframe here, like this, and then play it, notice how you're able to use that keyframing of locations in order to create moving characters and objects in your animations as well. And so there's a number of other new features in here as well, like a full screen mode, um, optimized three axis control gizmo, um, other things like that, as well as new assets, which uh, you can check all of those out um, in the D5 render forum post. So they've got new interior parallax assets, which those are very cool, as well as additional plants, additional characters, other things like that. And they've also updated the real time live sync for SketchUp, so you don't have to click on the update button in order to sync your model. So overall, very cool new release from D5 Render. All right, so every time I make a video about D5 Render, I'm always impressed by the number of features that they're adding. So if you do wanna check it out, you can either go to D5 Render's website, or um, if you wanna go through the link that I have in the notes down below, you can actually get D5 Render at a discounted rate. So either way, definitely worth checking out. Uh, just make sure that your computer does meet those hardware requirements, because it is pretty graphically intensive. But leave a comment below, let me know if you like this kind of video, 
video. If you want to see more about D5 Render, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.